Introduction of the Glories of Mary. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Anne Boulay. The Glories of Mary by St. Alphonsus Liguori. Introduction. Protest of the Author. In obedience to the decrees of Urban the Eighth of holy memory i protest that i do not intend to attribute any other than purely human authority to all the miracles revelations graces and incidents contained in this book neither to the titles holy or blessed apply to the servants of god not yet canonized except in cases where these have been confirmed by the holy roman catholic church and by the holy apostolic see of whom i profess myself an obedient son and therefore to their judgment i submit myself and whatever i have written in this book petition of the author to jesus and mary my most loving redeemer and lord jesus christ i thy poor servant knowing how pleasing to thee are those who seek to glorify thy most holy mother whom thou lovest so much and dost so much desire to see loved and honored by all men i propose to publish this book of mine which treats of her glories i know not to whom i could commend it but to thee who hast so much at heart the glory of this mother to thee then i present and dedicate it receive this little offering of my love for thee and thy beloved mother take it under thy protection and pour into the hearts of those who read it the light of confidence in this immaculate virgin and the warmth of a burning love for her in whom thou hast placed the hope and refuge of all the redeemed and for the reward of this my poor effort give me i pray thee that love for mary with which i have desired to inflame by this my little work the hearts of all those who read it to thee also i appeal o my sweetest lady and mother mary thou knowest that in thee next to jesus i have placed all hope of my eternal salvation since all the good i have received my conversion my vocation to leave the world and whatever other graces have been given me by god i acknowledge them as coming through thee thou knowest that to see thee loved by all as thou dost deserve and to offer thee some token of gratitude i have always sought to proclaim thee everywhere in public and in private and to inspire all men with a sweet and salutary devotion to thee i hope to continue to do so for the remainder of my life even to my last breath but i see by my advanced age and declining health that the end of my pilgrimage and my entrance into eternity are drawing near therefore i hope to give to the world before my death this little book of mine which may continue to proclaim thee for me and also may excite others to publish thy glories and the great mercy which thou dost exercise towards thy devoted servants i hope my most beloved queen that this my poor offering though it falls so far short of thy merit may be pleasing to thy grateful heart since it is wholly a gift of love extend then that most kind hand of thine with which thou hast delivered me from the world and from hell and accept it and protect it as belonging to thee but i ask this reward for my little offering that henceforth i may love thee more and that all into those hands this work shall fall may be inflamed with thy love so that immediately their desire may increase to love thee and see others love thee also and that they may engage with all ardor in proclaiming and promoting as far as possible thy praise and confidence in thy most holy intercession thus i hope thus may it be to the reader in order that this little work of mine may not be exposed to censure from very fastidious critics i have thought it best to place in a clearer light some of the propositions which it contains which may seem too bold or perhaps obscure i here enumerate some of them and if others my dear reader should come under your eye i pray you to consider them as meant and spoken by me according to the sense of true and sound theology and of the holy roman catholic church whose obedient son i profess myself in the introduction referring to chapter five of the book i have said that god has ordained that all graces should come to us through the hands of mary 
now this is a very consoling truth for souls tenderly attached to the most holy mary and for poor sinners who desire to be converted nor should this appear to any one inconsistent with sound theology since its author saint augustine puts it forth as a general statement that mary has shared by means of her charity in the spiritual birth of all the members of the church a well-known author whom no one will suspect of exaggeration or of fanciful and overheated devotion adds that as jesus christ really formed his church on calvary it is plain that the holy virgin really cooperated with him in a peculiar and excellent manner in its formation and for the same reason it may be said that if she brought forth jesus christ the head of the church without pain she did not bring forth the body of this head without pain hence she commenced on calvary to be in a particular manner mother of the whole church to say all in a few words almighty god in order to glorify the mother of the redeemer has ordained that her great charity should intercede for all those for whom her divine son offered and paid the superabundant ransom of his precious blood in which alone is our salvation life and resurrection it is on the basis of this doctrine and whatever belongs to it that i have undertaken to establish my propositions which the saints in their affecting colloquies with mary and in their fervent discourses concerning her have not hesitated to assert when an ancient father quoted by the celebrated vincenzo contensoni has written the fullness of grace was in christ as the head from which it flows but in mary as the neck through which it is transmitted this is plainly taught by the angelic doctor saint thomas who confirms all the foregoing in these words the blessed virgin is called full of grace in three ways the third in reference to its overflowing upon all men for great is it in each saint if he hath enough of grace for the salvation of many but this would be the greatest if he had enough for the salvation of all men and it is so with christ and the blessed virgin for in every danger we may obtain salvation through the glorious virgin hence canticle four verse four a thousand bucklers that is remedies against dangers hang upon her mille clypei pendent ex ea hence in every virtuous work we have her aid and therefore she says herself in me is all hope of life and of virtue in me omni space vita et virtuitis ecclesiasticus twenty four twenty five introduction which ought to be read my dear reader and brother in mary since the devotion which has urged me to write and now moves you to read this book renders us both happy children of this good mother if you ever should hear any one say that i could have spared this labor there being so many learned and celebrated books that treat of this subject answer him i pray you in the words of franconi the abbot which we find in the library of the fathers that the praise of mary is a fountain so full that the more it extends the fuller it becomes and the fuller it becomes the more it extends which signifies that the blessed virgin is so great and sublime that the more we praise her the more there is to praise so that saint augustine says all the tongues of men even if all their members were changed to tongues would not be sufficient to praise her as she deserves i know that there are innumerable books both great and small which treat of the glories of mary but as these are rare or voluminous and not according to my plan i have endeavored to collect in a small space from all the authors at my command the most select and pithy sentences of the fathers and theologians in order to give devout persons an opportunity with little effort or expense to inflame their ardor by reading of the love of mary and especially to present materials to priests which may enable them to excite by their sermons devotion to the divine mother worldly lovers are accustomed to mention frequently and to praise the persons beloved that these may be praised and applauded also by others then how poor must we suppose the love of others to be who boast of being lovers of mary but who seldom remember to speak of her and inspire the love of her also in others not so the true lovers of our most lovely lady they would praise her everywhere and see her loved by all the world and therefore in public and in private 
wherever it is in their power they endeavor to kindle in the hearts of all those blessed flames of love with which theirs are burning for their beloved queen but that every one may be persuaded of how great benefit it is to himself and the people to promote devotion to mary let us hear what the fathers say of it saint bonaventure declares that those who are devoted to publishing the glories of mary are secure of paradise and richard of st lawrence confirms this by saying that to honor the queen of angels is to acquire life everlasting since our most grateful lady as the same author pledges herself to honor in the other life him who promises to honor her in this and is there any one ignorant of the promise made by mary herself to those who engaged in promoting the knowledge and love of her upon the earth they that explain me shall have life everlasting as the holy church applies it on the festival of her immaculate conception exult exult o my soul said st bonaventure who was so assiduous in proclaiming the praises of mary and rejoice in her because many good things were prepared for those who praise her and since all the holy scriptures he added speak in praise of mary let us endeavor always with heart and tongue to celebrate this our divine mother that we may be conducted by her to the kingdom of the blessed we are told in the revelations of st bridget that the blessed emingo bishop being accustomed to begin his sermons with the praises of mary the virgin herself appeared one day to the saint and said to her tell that prelate who is accustomed to commence his discourses with my praises that i will be his mother and that i will present his soul to god and that he shall die a good death and he indeed died like a saint in prayer and in celestial peace mary appeared before his death to another religious a dominican who was accustomed to terminate his sermons by speaking of her she defended him from the assaults of the demons comforted him and bore away with her his happy soul the devout thomas a Kempis presents mary as commending to her son those who publish her praise and saying o oh, my son have compassion on the souls of thy lovers and of those who speak in my praise as far as the advantage of the people is concerned saint anselm says that the sacred womb of mary having been made the way of salvation for sinners sinners cannot but be converted and saved by discourses in praise of mary if the assertion is true and incontrovertible as i believe it to be and as i shall prove in the fifth chapter of this book that all graces are dispensed by the hand of mary alone and that all those who are saved are saved solely by the means of this divine mother it may be said as a necessary consequence that the salvation of all depends upon preaching mary and confidence in her intercession we know that saint bernard of siena sanctified italy saint dominic converted many provinces saint louis bertrand in all his sermons never failed to exhort his hearers to practice devotion towards mary and many others also have done the same i find that father paul Signori, the younger a celebrated missionary in every mission preached a sermon on devotion to mary and this he called his favorite sermon and we can attest in all truth that in our missions where we have an invariable rule not to omit the sermon on our lady no discourse is so profitable to the people or excites more compunction among them than that on the mercy of mary i say on the mercy of mary for saint bernard says we may praise her humility and marvel at her virginity but being poor sinners we are more pleased and attracted by hearing of her mercy for to this we more affectionately cling this we more often remember and invoke therefore in this little book leaving to other authors the description of the other merits of mary i have confined myself especially to treating of her great compassion and her powerful intercession having collected as far as possible with the labor of years all that the holy fathers and the most celebrated authors have said of the mercy and power of mary and because these attributes of the blessed virgin are wonderfully set forth in the great prayer of the salve regina approved by the church and required by her to be recited the greater part of the year by all the clergy secular and regular i have undertaken in the first place 
to explain in separate discourses this most devout prayer besides this i believe it would be acceptable to the servants of mary if i added discourses on her principal festivals and upon the virtues of our divine mother placing at the conclusion of them the practices of devotion most in use among her servants and approved by the church devout reader if this little work of mine pleases you as i hope it will i pray you to commend me to the holy virgin that i may obtain great confidence in her protection ask for me this grace and i will ask the same for you whoever you may be who bestow on me this charity O oh, blessed is he who clings with love and confidence to those two anchors of salvation jesus and mary he certainly will not be lost let us both say o oh reader with the devout alfonso rodriguez jesus and mary my sweet loves for you i will suffer for you i will die may i be wholly yours may i be in nothing my own may we love jesus and mary and become saints since we can aspire and hope for no greater happiness than this farewell till we meet in heaven at the feet of this sweet mother and her dearly beloved son to praise them to thank them and love them in their immediate presence through all eternity amen prayer to the blessed virgin to obtain a good death o oh mary sweet refuge of miserable sinners at the moment when my soul departs from this world my sweetest mother by the grief that thou didst endure when thou wast present at the death of thy son upon the cross then assist me with thy mercy keep far from me my infernal enemies and come thyself to take my soul and present it to my eternal judge do not abandon me o my queen thou next to jesus must be my comfort in that dreadful moment entreat thy son that in his goodness he will grant me the favor to die clasping thy feet and to breathe out my soul in his sacred wounds saying jesus and mary i give you my heart and my soul end of the introduction